as we look in at the Burns home today, we find Gracie talking to her neighbor, Blanche Morton. Oh, I'm so glad you came over, Blanche. Now I can invite you to the birthday party I'm giving for George tonight. Wonderful. Will it be a surprise? Mm, I'll say. It's not even his birthday. <laughs> Well, then why are you giving him a party? Well, I never can surprise him on his birthday because he knows it's his birthday. And besides, just yesterday he said to me, he said, he said, Gracie, I've been married to you for 15 years and nothing you do surprises me. <laughs> this time I got him. You sure have. Mm -hmm. And surprises are so much fun, Blanche. For example, when your husband gives you a kiss for no reason at all, don't you enjoy it more? No. That means I have to sober him up. <laughs> what are you giving George for his birthday? Well, I'm going down to Baker's gift shop and get him a whole lot of little things. And for an extra surprise, I'm going to have his initials engraved on his watch and his cigarette lighter and his fountain pen. Well, can you take them without him knowing it? They're already in my purse. I sat on his lap after breakfast and ran one hand through his hair and the other through his pockets. <laughs> well, I never. Well, you should try it sometime. It's fun. Hello, dear. Oh, George, you're home earlier than I expected. Yes. Hello, Blanche. Hello, George. Well, I'll be running along, Gracie. See you later. Bye, Blanche. Uh, Gracie, I'm worried. Worried? Yeah. When I got down to downtown, I discovered my watch and my fountain pen were missing. Oh, well, stop worrying. Maybe somebody stole them. <laughs> well, that eases my mind. I seem to remember having them in my pocket along with my cigarette lighter. It's still here in my pocket. No, oh, my cigarette lighter is gone, too. Oh, trifles, trifles. What would you like for lunch? <laughs> You're taking this awfully calmly. Well, that's a family trait. You see, I'm part Indian. <laughs> Your mother and father are both white. Yeah, I know. I get the Indian blood from my brother. <laughs> that's impossible for white parents to have Indian children. Ah, trifles, trifles. What would you like for lunch? <laughs> I'm not hungry. I want my watch, my lighter, and my fountain pen. Well, for a man who's not hungry, that's a lot to eat. <laughs> oh, stop. Well, maybe the stuff will show up. In the meantime, I'll use your fountain pen. It's right here in your purse, isn't it? Well, George, don't touch that purse. It's just to get your fountain pen. Well, here's my watch, and my fountain pen, and my cigarette lighter. How did they get in here? A uh, how? How? Oh, you're an Indian, too. <laughs> Cut that out. I want to know how all my things got in your purse. Oh, oh, is that my purse? I thought I was putting them in your purse. No. Mine is baby blue suede with a shoulder strap. <laughs> now, these things are going back in my pocket where they belong. Oh, now I've upset you. Oh, oh I'm sorry, darling. Here, relax in your easy chair, and I'll sit on your lap and run my hand through your hair. Again? Yeah, I like to. Well, it is relaxing. Well, sure. There, that's it. Uh, mm. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, it's good for me. But you don't get anything out of it. <laughs> ah, you're cute. I could sit here all day. Well, not me. I've got things to do. Goodbye. Uh, Gracie, what about... Uh, see you later, dear. What a woman. Well, I'm so comfortable, I might as well smoke a cigar. Hey, my lighter is going again. And my fountain pen, too. And my watch. Wait till I get my hands on her. Well, hello, Mr. Burns. Where are you going in all the hurry? Oh, hello, Officer Craig. I'm looking for Gracie. Have you seen her on your beat? No, but I saw her car parked in front of Baker's gift shop. How come me to notice it? She was parked very unusual. What do you mean? She wasn't in front of a fire plot. <laughs> I guess that is unusual for Gracie. Yeah. It wouldn't be so bad, but she parks on the sidewalk side of the plug. Sure. <laughs> 
she does it, I'll have to give her a ticket. Well, I'll go over to Baker's right now and speak to her. Say, speaking of Baker's, Mrs. Baker says the kleptomaniac has been robbing their store. Gee, that's tough. Well, I'll see you later. Funny thing about them kleptomaniacs, they're nuts. <laughs> they pass up valuable stuff and just take little knickknacks like cheap cigarette lighters and dollar fountain pens. <laughs> And uh, you saw Gracie's car in front of Bacon? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Burns, your face is turning kind of green. Is it something you ate? No, it's something I married. <laughs> I'll see you later. Well, Mr. Baker, I guess I've picked out enough presents for my husband. Well, what's the occasion, Mrs. Burns? Well, I'm giving George a surprise birthday party tonight. These things are for him. Now, how much do they come to? $13.50. With the tax, it'll be $13.80. Well, I'll take it without the tax. <laughs> well, let's just forget the tax, shall we? Oh, good. Here's your money. Uh, oh, Mrs. Burns, why are you getting this little musical cup for your husband? Oh, well, because when you tip it up to drink, it plays three blind mice. You see? Oh! Oh, you, your husband will like that? No, but I will. You know, I never see him at breakfast because he hides behind the newspaper. At least now when he drinks his coffee, I'll know where he's in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, you like your little joke, don't you? Yeah, I love him. <laughs> now, give me his presents and I'll be going. <laughs> Oh, George is going to love these birthday presents when I get them wrapped. Oh, my goodness. Here he comes up the walk. I'd better hide them here in the hall closet. Oh, that darn thing keeps falling over. There. Phew, I made it. I see. I want to talk to you. Oh, I... Dear, I have to shop for dinner. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Just a minute, Seb. What were you doing at Baker's gift shop today? Who said I was there? Officer Craig. Well, I'm surprised you'd listen to an old fuddy duddy like him. Well, he doesn't know his fuddy from his duddy. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, where are my watch, my fountain pen, and my lighter? Did you look in the washing machine? They're in the washing machine? They are. What a silly place to keep them. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Just a second. Hmm? Uh, uh, honey, look, I, I, are you sure that you feel all right? I mean, are there bells ringing in your head or anything? Oh, of course not. There's absolutely nothing in my head. Goodbye, dear. Well, she shook the whole house. Well... Holy smoke. I hear bells now. Maybe I'm the one that's nuts. It sounded like it's coming from the hall closet here. Better have a look. Oh, no. It's full of loot. She must have lifted everything in Baker's store. I've got to get this stuff back to Baker's without anyone finding out about it. Hello, Mr. Baker. I... Oh, it's, it's you, Mrs. Baker. Yes, yeah, me. William's out to lunch. I'm sorry. I mistook you for a man. You didn't. You mistook me for my husband. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? Well, nothing. I I just came in to sort of look around. I thought so. You never spent a dime in here in your life. That's a fine way to talk to a customer. Don't tell me how to treat a customer. The motto of this shop is courtesy. So be courteous or I'll throw you out. Yes, Mrs. Baker. And why have you got that golf bag hung around your neck with no clubs in it? What'd you do? Bring your lunch? Why, no, I... Well, watch yourself. Don't break anything. Okay, I'll just sort of browse around. <laughs> Now, if I can just slip these other things back on the shelf. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 
no, Mrs. Let me look in that golf bag. Just as I thought, it's loaded. No, Mrs. You work pretty fast for your age. Look, Mrs. Police! Uh, wait a minute. Police! Mrs. Baker. Mrs. Baker! Mrs. Baker! You heard it. Police! Let go! Police! Let go! Police! Let go! Mrs. Baker, please get off my chest. You're a very heavy woman. <laughs> Be still, you kleptomaniac. Oh, Mrs. Baker. I'm back, pet. Mr. Baker, tell your wife to let me up. Why, it's Mr. Burns. Yes. You might as well let him up, Imogene. He won't spend anything. <laughs> I'm not trying to get him to spend anything. He's the kleptomaniac who's been robbing us. He is? I caught him with a whole golf bag full of stuff. Call the police. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Baker. I I can't explain how I got that stuff, but I'm willing to pay for every bit of it. Oh, well, I, I think that's fair enough, Imogene. Let's not have him arrested. Oh, well, all right. His poor wife would just have to bail him out anyway. Oh, thank you, Imogene. You've got his heart as big as a house. Yeah, and that's the smallest part of her. <laughs> now, get off my chest, please. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Burns. Yes? This is Mrs. Baker. Oh, yes. You're the man who runs the gift shop twice. Uh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Burns, I called to warn you about your husband. Warn me? Yes, he's a catamaniac. Well, what do you care how he votes? <laughs> it has nothing to do with politics. It hasn't? No, catamania is stealing. I thought you said it had nothing to do with politics. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, Mrs. Burns, is that I caught your husband taking things from my store. A kleptomaniac is a person who can't help me. Why, George wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, no? You better watch him or he'll be stealing from you. That's not true. And I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in my telephone. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I see. Say, my darling little bookie boy would steal. Oh, he's an angel. Oh, I'll get his presents out of the closet and wrap them for him. They're, oh, they're gone. Oh, and only George could have taken them. Oh, oh Mrs. Baker is right. George is a politician. I mean, a kleptomaniac. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Oh. Toby, I came to you because I need some help. Well, what can I do, George? Well, I understand that when you went to school, you studied psychology. That's right. I went to a college that concentrates on education and doesn't bother with football. I went to USC. <laughs> well, uh, good. Uh, do, you, do you know anything about what causes kleptomania? Why, sure. I remember my psych prof explaining it. He said that kleptomania was caused by a feeling of insecurity, a feeling of not being loved. Well, then it's my fault. I don't bring Gracie little things to show her I love her, so she goes out and takes them. Gracie? She's a kleptomaniac? Yeah. But I'm going to cure it right now. I'm going out and buy her dozens of presents. I'm coming home with my pocket bulging with stuff. But, George, that'll cost a fortune. What do I care for money at a time like this? It's Gracie's happiness. It's Gracie's future. It's Gracie's money. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness. Here comes George. I've been so worried about him. I hope the little maniac hasn't been out kleptoing. Hello, darling. Home again. Hello, dear. George, your pockets are bulging. What's in them? Oh, just a few little things I picked up. <laughs> you picked up? Where? Well, I, I got something from just about every store in town. <laughs> this, uh, this cologne was on sale at the May Company. Oh, George, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, don't be silly. It was a steal. Oh! <laughs> oh, George! You like it, I'll go back and get you some more. <laughs> no, no, you mustn't. 
Well, why not? Well, uh, the, the, the car's out of gas. So what? I'll take a bus. Oh, no, you mustn't. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I've taken lots of buses. Well, it's got to stop. George, you wait here. I'm going to consult a psychiatrist. Well, maybe that is the best thing for you to do, Gracie. Yeah, I'll be right back. Hello, Officer Craig. You're parked on the sidewalk again. I'll have to give you a ticket. Well, that's nice of you, but I'm in a hurry. Uh, give it to my husband. But, Mrs. Burns, I... Oh, well. I got a commission on traffic tickets. He'd be a gold mine. Yes? Oh, Hello, Officer Craig. What's up? Mr. Burns, I hate to tell you, but this time your wife's gone too far. You mean... You... She's broken the law, and I've got to do my duty. Wait a minute. Uh, you don't want her. I'm the guilty one. You? Yes. I stole that stuff from Kramer's gift shop. I'm the kleptomaniac. Take me to jail. Okay. Well, let's go, klepto. <laughs> Gracie, you mean George has been arrested? Yes, Bill, he's a kleptomaniac. His case comes up in court tonight. Uh, will you help him? Well, of course I'll help him, Gracie. George is my oldest friend. Really? Well, sure, I got friends I've known longer, but George is the oldest. <laughs> Come on, Bill, we haven't a moment to lose. We've got to help George pound the coat. Pound the coat? Smack the jacket? You mean beat the rap? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> Order in the court. Next case. George Burns, Your Honor, charged with petty larceny. I'm the arresting officer. How do you plead, Mr. Burns? Guilty, Your Honor. I'll make a full confession. I'm ready to sing. Stop the music. <laughs> these people. Well, where's George Burns' his wife and his best friend? I'm the wife. I'm the friend? <laughs> Your Honor, I can prove that Mr. Burns is not responsible for anything he did today and therefore is not guilty. For what reason? Temporary insanity. <laughs> Temporary insanity? Yes. <laughs> Well, Bill, you did your best, but it looks like George is going to jail. Yeah, poor guy. Think of what jail will do to him. Oh, yes, I can just see him after a couple of years. A broken man, pale, feeble, shuffling along like a zombie. You don't think jail will change him, huh? <laughs> this whole thing is my fault. George took those things because he loved me. It's up to me to save them. Well, but Gracie, how can you... Court is reconvened. Who is the next witness in the case of George Burns? I am, Your Honor. George Burns is innocent. I'm the kleptomaniac. That isn't true, Your Honor. It all started before you met me, George. You see, Your Honor, I was raised in the toughest part of San Francisco, the Bobbly Coast. <laughs> and, and all the barbers were crazy about me. <laughs> Young lady, there hasn't been a Barbary coat since 1906. It was hit by an earthquake. That was me, Earthquake Allen. <laughs> I lived there for years with the gamblers and thieves and gangsters and murderers. And then I fell into bad company. <laughs> Look, Gracie. The you... police got on my trail, so I sailed for China. In less than a year, I was the most notorious woman in Shanglo. That's Shanghai. I lived in the low part of town. I did. <laughs> then, then I drifted on. For five years, I was a dancing girl in Singapore. For the next five years, I was a singing girl in Dancapore. <laughs> Judge, don't believe her. Please, Judge. Oh. And then I returned to America, and my life got worse than ever. I did everything that was bad and horrible. I sank lower and lower and lower. Finally, I went into vaudeville. <laughs> okay, that's enough. 
Your Honor, she's just trying to take the blame. I'm the kleptomaniac. He is not. I am. No, I am. Order. Order. Uh, will Mr. Baker take the stand, please? Yes, Your Honor. It was your store that was robbed. Now, which one of these two do you want to prosecute? Well, neither one. But if you refuse to prosecute, I'll have to dismiss the case. That suits me fine. Order! Order! order. Oh, darn it, where's my gavel? Then I get off without a sentence, Judge? How long have you been married to your wife? Fifteen years. You've served your time, case dismissed. <laughs> Lucky to get out of that, Gracie. Oh, yes. Now, let's hurry to a psychiatrist and, and get you cured of being a kleptomaniac. Me? I'm not one. It's you. Me? I'm not one. Well, there's, there's one loose. Who is it? Uh, excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Burns. I just want to say I'm sorry you got dragged into court. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Baker. And thanks for saving us. I want to shake your hand. Well, thank you. Hey. That's the judge's gavel fell out from under your coat. And his water pitcher. My goodness, I've been at it again. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Oh, he's such a nice little man. 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 Uh, now, where were we? Oh, yes. You were saying there's a kleptomaniac loose. I wonder who it is. We'll never know. Gracie, it was swell of you to get up in court and be like you did. Uh -huh. Would you like to show your appreciation by buying me a new hat? No. Well, uh, will you give me the money and let me buy it? No. Nope. Uh -huh. Sit down, George, and let me run my hand through your hair. <laughs> I, 